Support Wrestle Talk. Give us a subscribe. Wrestling's the worst part about wrestling. If you're really honest with yourself, you only watch professional wrestling for three reasons. Video packages before the match, the entrances, and the finishes. Everything in the middle is filler, filler, Ernest Miller. And while I'm 70% sure I'm joking, I have to admit that when I first started watching wrestling back in the Attitude Era, the finishes were the main attraction for me. Leviathans of Ham hitting world-ending moves, sometimes from out of nowhere, sometimes with theatrics, sometimes hitting their opponent's finishes on their opponent. What a time to be alive. It never got old, and the pop that always follows a finisher was and remains a hugely addictive part of wrestling fandom. Celebrating the moves that make the crowd come unglued, here are the 20 greatest finishers in wrestling history. Number 20, the bank statement. Ah yes, submission finishes, the choice of the wrestling connoisseur. Some submissions look like they don't hurt at all, cough, STF, cough, but the bank statement looks like a spine ender every time. The hands locked in front of the face makes us feel the pain at home right in our noses, and the talk banks can get on the back is truly nightmarish at times, especially against Charlotte. Look at that. It's a simple cross face, but sometimes simple is best. Number 19, the double moonsault. And sometimes stupid, complicated, stupid is okay too. Step right up, the patron saint of silly wrestling, it's Ricochet, who never met a move you couldn't add one more rotation to. The double moonsault is absolutely spectacular, but it ranks a little low for a few reasons. One, it's bloody dangerous. And two, because it's so dangerous, the person on the top rope often takes ages psyching themselves up before they hit it, which can break immersion. But that being said, look at it so pretty. Number 18, the big boot. More specifically, Tests Big Boot. For too long now, the move has simply been a counter to an Irish whip. Charlotte does a fairly good one, Rhea Ripley does an even better one, but no one in wrestling had a Big Boot like Test. It was like getting jousted to death. They should have protected the hell out of that move and used it to make him a huge star because it's like a shotgun blast and a cannonball to the face all in one. Number 17, the 630. Hello again, Ricochet. Aren't you silly? The one and only looks at your 450 splashes and then farts in their general direction. Although the move has has been made a lot more famous by Prince Ricochet, Puma Ricochet, the move was actually innovated by Jack Evans, who actually, looking at both side by side, hits it a little harder than Ricochet himself. The one and only hits it safer, but looks like he rolls off his opponent with less impact, whereas Jack Evans, splat. Number 16, Black Mass. Some strike finishes are absolutely shite. Well, it's the big show, but some are damned iconic, from Ox Baker's infamous heart punch, to Kenji Muto's shining wizard, to Nakamura's bomb aye or Kinshasa if you're basic. These were all long listed, but beating them all is Black Mass. It's an out of nowhere finisher up there with the best, and God, when Alistair Black hits it flush, you can see someone's soul leave their body. Few finishers are more of a convincing knockout blow, and he can even hit two people with just one, because he's a daddy. Number 15, the figure four leg lock. Again, do you want to seem like a discern? wrestling fan, slide those glasses up your nose and say, well actually, a submission finisher requires a lot more skill. The figure four is one of those skilled submission finishes, and it's one of the most iconic moves of all time, being the move by the man in the NWA throughout the 80s. Ric Flair passed it to his daughter, who actually managed to improve it with the figure eight, and then Ric Flair passed it to The Miz, who perfected it, winky face. But no matter who uses it, it will always be greeted with woos, because like Ric himself, it's a wrestling artifact. Number 14, the frog splash. The greatest era finisher of all time, RIP my mentions. It's not just because it was the finisher of Eddie Guerrero, one of the all-time greats. One of the move's strengths is how different wrestlers bring different things to it. When Kevin Owens hits it, it has a huge amount of impact. When RVD hits it, you marveled at the distance he could travel. With Montez Ford, you look at the height he achieves. With Eddie, you get his fluid, perfect form. It's a beloved move for a damn good reason. Number 13, the sharpshooter. The most over-move in Canadian history. Bret Hart's use of the sharpshooter was so iconic that every time WWE ventures to the Great White North, someone has to use it. It's the law. A deadly maneuver that targets the legs and the back. The sharpshooter won not only Bret Hart countless matches, Sting used it to great evasion as a scorpion deathlock, Natalia still puts people away with it, and Shawn Michaels has a version that was so powerful it once ended a match without the opponent even submitting. Winky face. Number 12, the spear. One of the most ubiquitous finishes in the industry. Edge and Christian both used a spear for a time and it was fine. Then you got the best of all time 
time Goldberg. He used it as a sort of first half of a two-part finisher. Bobby Lashley, who does a whimsical little forward roll with it. Roman Reigns, who does a bloody great one. I don't even want to hear any discussion about that. And a personal favourite, Rhino's Gore, which would reliably make an opponent 100% full dead. Number 11, the Lion Tamer, the greatest submission finisher of all time, and I am not talking about the Walls of Jericho. That is a Boston Crab, and it is fine. The Lion Tamer is the Walls of Jericho's terrifying mega death variant, and whenever it makes a surprise appearance, it's like Christmas, but for next. If the move has a shortcoming, it's that Jericho can only lock it in on people who are actually able to take it, which seems like a rare few these days, but you'd be hard-pressed to find a move that's more convincing as a submission finisher in the entirety of wrestling. Look Look at that horrible. Number 10, the Doomsday Device. There aren't too many tag finishes on this list because honestly, we'd be here all day. But how do you leave the LOD slash Road Warriors Doomsday Device off the list? Answer, you don't or they'll find you. The delight of the fandom and the terror of the enhancement talent industry, the Doomsday Device saw many scared men flipped arse over tit for our pleasure and I can imagine fewer situations I'd least like to be in than on animal shoulders with hawks smiling at me from the top rope, except maybe in a Steinerizer. That would also be a terrible time. Number nine, the Lariat. Now, hang on. I know what you're thinking. A clothesline. One of the 10 greatest finishes of all time. Yes, and I have four key pieces of evidence. Exhibit A, Stan Hansen's Western Lariat, which is a cowboy taking your head off your shoulders. Exhibit B, the Buckshot Lariat, which is a cowboy taking your head off your shoulders with theatrics. Exhibit C, the clothesline from hell, which is a cowboy businessman burying you in a shallow fucking grave. And Exhibit D, the Rainmaker, a clothesline that turned Kazuchika Okada into an international national megastar. Clotheslines, wrestling silent killer. Number eight, the elevated powerbomb. Powerbombs can be deadly. They'll jangle your spine with a bonus whiplash cherry as a garnish. Elevated powerbombs are when a wrestler gets their opponents up, thinks in for a penny, in for a pound, then raises them up a bit more before bringing them down for max damage. They're things of beauty and for example, see the razor's edge, one of the most protected finishes of all time. Taker's last ride, which looks like it sent Triple H to meet his Jesus. And of course, the spirit bomb, the sexiest move move from wrestling's sexiest man. Number seven, the Tombstone pile driver. This move would bloody kill you if Taker actually hit it, compress your neck and leave your spine looking like a shaken packet of Pringles, you know, like it did when Steve Austin accidentally took one at SummerSlam 97. As such, it's also one of the fakest moves in wrestling. No one even slightly believes Undertaker is hitting the move, or that Kane is hitting the move, or the Young Bucks, or Akada, but also absolutely no one cares because it's over and it will never not be over. It acted as the punctuation mark to some of the most iconic WrestleMania matches of all time, and it cemented its place in history. Number six, the F5. And now, for some very believable violence. The F5 is the world's sweatiest mountain putting you on his shoulders and throwing you at the ground right on your tiny face. Like Brock himself, the move came out of nowhere and instantly rocketed to the top of the industry, feeling like it had been here the whole time. It's savage, powerful, dominating, and would be higher on the list if the F5 wasn't also indirectly responsible for creating the parody FU, which would become the most overrated finisher of all time. Except maybe the leg drop, or the people's elbow. God, my man. Mentions. Number five, the One Winged Angel. Kenny Omega likes video games. I'm not sure if that was clear from the fact he named his finisher after the villain from Final Fantasy VII. Anyway, yes, giant nerd Kenny Omega has one of the most protected moves in wrestling. Literally, one of the greatest feuds in pro wrestling history was built around the move and how if he hit it, it's game over. It's like the perfect plex on steroids. Both are slams that catch their opponent in an instant pinning situation, but while Mr. Perfect suplex them, Omega nails them with a driver spiking their shoulders down with a grueling swing. Number four, the burning hammer. If you want to talk mega death moves that only a few people can take without an instant murder investigation afterwards, fewer moves are as infamous as the burning hammer. It's a reverse Death Valley driver emphasis on the death, innovated by Kenta Kabashi, where he gets you up for a torture rack before dropping you on your bean. It was simply unkick outable until Brian Kendrick hit one on Kota Ibushi and he kicked out and the internet was torn between marking out for a banned super finisher suddenly being seen in WWE or raging that someone kicked out of the thing. Number three, the cutter. You can't make me choose between the RKO and the diamond cutter. You just can't make me. It's the second greatest surprise finisher in the world, and no matter how much of a Goldberg you are, you can still eat canvas at a moment's notice. The unpredictability and tension created by the move being able to strike suddenly and on anyone has been the foundation of Randall Keith's character for almost his entire career. The move deserves a Hall of Fame spot all of its own. Also, a special shout out to the greatest tag team finisher of all time, the Elevated Cutter, also known 
as the 3D. Number 2, The Stunner. Has any move ever produced a bigger pop than a well-timed stunner? Genuinely, if Austin ever appeared on WWE TV and at no point did he hit someone with a stunner, that would be regarded as an instant heel turn. It's so perfectly designed for a pop as well. The kick to the gut lasts just long enough to get you excited before the stunner brings you out of your seat. Whether or not it's the coolest finisher of all time or was just performed by the coolest wrestler of all time is a debate you can have, but ultimately, does it matter? It's just cool, and this entry wouldn't be complete without a shout out to the Eclipse, Ember Moon's top rope stunner, which is also utterly rad. And number one, Sweet Chin Music. If you thought the stunner should be here, okay, fair enough. If you also think the super kick has been diluted by being a signature move for Dolph Ziggler, the Young Bucks, and many more, then I understand that too. But also, no, it's the coolest finisher of all time. It's brutal, surprising, can be here on anyone, guarantees a monster pop, has a great lead in if Michaels decides to tune up the band, it's completely completely convincing as a match finisher. It is just the best. It's the best. That's our list. Did I miss your favorite finishing move off? Then let me know. I'm a dickhead about it in the comments. Why not? Then also, while you're here, do subscribe to WrestleTalk for more news and lists. And never forget to jam that jam.